As I show you how to take and plant Aeonium cuttings, keep in mind I'm holding my iPhone in my left hand and doing everything else with my right. It's that easy to snap off Aeonium rosettes and plant them in fresh soil. Where leaves once were attached to stems are bands of cells that produce roots. As designer Laura Eubanks says, if the cutting stands up, you've done your job. The best time to do this is in the fall, after the weather cools, when the plants come out of summer dormancy and start their winter growth. At the base of the rosette, the oldest leaves wither and fall off. That just leaves the stem getting longer and taller. You see where it goes into the ground? Okay, well that was probably only two or three plants at the beginning. And this is what they did over time. And so now, what do you have? 50? So all you want are the rosettes at the tips of a leggy aeonium. You might as well pull the entire plant out of the ground because it's not going to give you any new growth. Should you let the cut-ins callus overnight before planting? I don't bother because I wait a week or more before I water them. Letting cut ends callus is more important if you live in a moist, humid climate where cuttings are at risk of fungus that can lead to rot. I replant my aeoniums whenever they get overgrown and start to look shabby. Aeoniums that grow atop ever-lengthening stems, as opposed to shrub-forming varieties, need to be cut back every few years and replanted. This especially applies to those in the arboreum species, which means tree-like, and not so much to others, such as Aeonium haworthii or Aeonium kiwi, because those form mounded shrubs. How to start cuttings is the same with all Aeoniums, and for that matter, most stem succulents. I like to use a coarse potting mix for Aeoniums, like Bonsai Jacks, but it really doesn't matter as long as it drains well. Once you have your cuttings planted, set them in bright shade, never full sun. If you have to, protect them with shade cloth, otherwise they'll sunburn. You can remove the shade cloth when the weather turns cool and the days are shorter. By spring, they'll have rooted, grown, and look great. I've shown how I redo a garden bed that's mainly aeoniums in one of my most popular videos, How to Refresh an Overgrown Succulent Garden. You don't have to cut aeoniums back and restart the rosettes as cuttings. Sometimes I like the way an aeonium looks when its trunk bends and drops. It's kind of fun to see how long it'll get. In my garden northeast of San Diego, I grow a dozen aeonium varieties as understory plants. Trees and eaves protect these thin-leaved succulents from strong sun, heat in the triple digits, and occasional midwinter cold snaps. Learn more about aeoniums and other succulents on my website, deboraleebaldwin.com, in my books, and in other videos on my YouTube channel. I hope you found this video interesting, helpful, and enjoyable. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.